Out of every 10 domestic violence situations, eight of the victims are women and nine of the perpetrators are men. These are the stats from Costa Rica. In 2019 alone, 11 women lost their lives to domestic violence in Costa Rica, and one of them was a 19-year-old single mother, Eva Maria Ulloa. Eva was an activist who had a very stern voice on social media regarding gender-based violence. But what happens when a woman becomes a victim of the very thing she's raising her voice against? Tragically, that's exactly what happened to Eva on the fateful day of November 1st, 2019. Even though the Costa Rican police acted quickly in Ava's case, and the perpetrator was caught immediately, there were countless signs and pleas for help leading up to the crime. Ava's life could have been saved many times over, but unfortunately, that didn't happen. Eva Marrera Ulloa was born in the year 2000 in Costa Rica, and this is also the place where the rest of this tragic case takes place. Not much is known about her childhood, but according to her parents and friends, Eva was defined as a sweet and caring girl. She was also very trusting, and her parents defined her as being a bit naive, but with a heart of gold. Like anyone, Eva interacted with a lot of people on social media, and Facebook was her go-to place for expressing her thoughts with her followers. Ava was a huge advocate for women's rights, and she was a feminist through and through. She raised her voice against a lot of issues surrounding gender-based violence. Facebook was an outlet and a platform for Ava to express her thoughts on the many unfortunate occurrences relating to violence against women that took place mainly in Costa Rica. At the time of the crime in 2019, Ava was studying social work at the Latin University of Costa Rica while being active on Facebook about her views on gender-based violence and seeking new ways to stop them once and for all. Ava, being the helpful and generous person that she was, also encouraged women to seek help if they ever found themselves in an unfortunate situation, to the point where she even extended her own help to women she knew or people in her friend circle. Ava was doing her part in trying to raise awareness against violence of all kinds, but particularly against women. But as Ava was fighting for women's rights, she was also dealing with something eerily similar to what she was preaching on social media in her personal life. What was even more heartbreaking was the fact that she'd been fighting this battle for years, during which many awful things happened to her. It all started when Ava was just 13 years old. Being naive and a hopeless romantic, Ava had little experience in relationships, and she tended to fall hard and fast for the people that she was interested in. And that's exactly what happened when teenage Ava had her very first and probably longest lasting experience in love and relationships with a man named Randall Oviedo. Randall Oviedo lived super close to Ava. Their houses were about five blocks away and they saw each other all the time. When Ava was only 13, Randall was 20. He was legally an adult, which is very alarming, but the two quickly got into a relationship regardless. There were countless red flags surrounding Randall, but it seems that Ava was completely unaware of most of them. For starters, Randall was heavily involved in drug dealing and a trafficking gang in San Pablo, a nearby district of Costa Rica. This operation was mainly led by his brother and other people that he knew closely. Randall's job was to supply the product to buyers, and it's shocking to think that a young 20-year-old man would be the main supplier of such a dangerous and shady business, but it seemed that Randall loved his work. Ava knew that Randall wasn't the most morally ethical person. This relationship had no future and anyone from the outside could see it, but Ava wanted to make it work because she truly loved and cared about Randall. This makes everything about the case all the more sad and tragic. Understandably, given Randall's background and relatively big age gap, Ava's parents did not approve of their daughter's relationship. They tried very hard to reason with Ava that Randall was a bad influence on her, and they tried to persuade Ava to end her relationship with Randall. But Ava was already under Randall's spell, and she was so enamored by him that she didn't want to see reason or logic. This led to something very unexpected. Soon after Ava and Randall started dating, Ava found out that she was pregnant. She was just 15 years old by this time. Now, this was alarming on so many levels. No matter whether Ava consented to their physical relationship or not, Randall was an adult, and he should have been making reasonable choices, but he didn't. 
This man had an extensive track record of bad decisions, and it doesn't seem like his involvement with Ava was going to be any different. Randall was known for being a reckless, dangerous, and non-serious man who had only one goal, to manipulate Ava into submission. It's distressing to consider what Randall put Ava through. On many occasions, Randall emotionally, physically, and psychologically abused Ava and drove Ava into a corner of despair, where she couldn't do anything but feel helpless. Ava thought that there was no light at the end of the tunnel. She felt truly trapped by this man. She was slowly beginning to see that Randall was no good for her. But how could she leave? He was so volatile and so dangerous that even if she announced she wanted to end the relationship, he most likely would not be letting her go easily. But something happened that gave Ava another chance at life. See, Randall, with his involvement in such a vile business, so to call it, soon caught the attention of the Costa Rican authorities. Although the gang Randall operated wasn't huge by any means, it was still an illegal business, which meant that Randall and the rest of the members were going to face consequences if they got caught. Well, luckily, that happened, and Randall and his gang members, including his brother and three closest friends, were arrested in early 2016 for drug trafficking. And this was the same time that Ava was due to give birth. This was very hard for Ava as a young new mother to be, but she was determined to bring light into her very dark world. And in mid 2016, while Randall was in jail for drug trafficking for six years, Ava gave birth to a beautiful and healthy baby boy. Now, you would think that a baby would change Randall's perspective, and he would try to turn his life around for the sake of his family. But that wasn't the case. Randall actually called Ava immediately after she delivered their baby, but not to wish her well and ask about their son. It was to wish Ava and the baby the worst. Randall was furious over the phone and was lashing out at Ava, terrifying her to no end. Ava, at that point in time, started to become detached from Randall. She was focused on her pregnancy, her baby's birth, and her new life with her son. And this was also the time when Ava finally and fortunately realized that Randall was no good for her especially after the grueling phone calls she received in the hospital. See, there were signs of abuse in the relationship from the get-go, but Ava, being in love and seeing the world with rose-tinted glasses, wasn't ready to accept reality. Randall had tried to isolate Ava from her friends and family, and even resorted to physically abusing Ava whenever she tried to stand up for herself. He was manipulative to the point where Ava wasn't even allowed to see her parents, who she missed desperately. Fortunately, when Randall was arrested and sent to prison, this was a time for Ava to regroup and reclaim control of her life. But Randall, being the manipulator he was, tried to control Ava even behind bars. Randall would constantly call Ava from prison, trying to persuade her to get back together with him. But Ava held her ground. She focused all of her time on her baby and her studies, and even broke up with Randall to start a new relationship. But things were anything but perfect. See, Randall had no idea about Ava being in a new relationship, and she'd moved on with her life. He got wind of this from one of his brothers, who wasn't in prison, claiming that he saw Ava with another man. This information infuriated Randall because he realized he no longer had control over her. Now, not only had he lost his girlfriend at this point, but his son as well. Now, you would think that Ava's new relationship was better than her previous one, but that wasn't the case. Her current partner also mistreated and abused her, which led Ava to seek help from the National Institute for Women. This is essentially a platform for women to seek professional help and report their abuse, and hopefully be given a hand to help them out of the bad situation that they found themselves in. Ava got professional help and even legal advice as to how to protect herself from violence coming from someone who she was in a relationship with. Unfortunately, Ava found herself in a position that many men and women find themselves in time and time again. You'd think that if you fell for the wrong person once, you'd make dang sure not to do that a second time. But this sort of behavior often becomes a pattern, an endless cycle. It leads so many people down the wrong path because they feel like they keep falling for the same type of person again and again. And let's be honest, that's exactly what's happening. But it's not the victim's fault. This type of thinking, this type of attraction, for lack of a better word, becomes so easy to get trapped in that it feels like it attaches itself to your DNA. It becomes a part of who you are. So much so that you can't even begin to fathom how to change this pattern of thinking. This is why so many people begin to blame themselves, but that never ends well. And that's such a disturbing way of looking at the situation. Thankfully, Ava knew that there was a way out and kudos to her for seeing the danger of the path before her 
and finding professional help before it was too late. This was the point in her life where Ava decided to advocate for women's rights, and she did so by expressing her very moving thoughts on Facebook. She also took part in many of these awareness movements and campaigns, and in one of them she was seen with her son, holding a sign that read, In my family, there's no room for hate. Ava, now feeling more empowered than ever, went to the family court of Costa Rica and got a protective order against her ex-partner, Randall. But a simple sheet of paper would be no help because evil was closing in on Ava fast, and she was about to experience the most horrific thing someone could ever witness in their life. Remember that Randall was supposed to serve six years behind bars for his drug-related charges? Well, oddly enough, he was released within three years on good behavior. As you may have guessed, Randall constantly followed Ava around as soon as he got out of prison, persuading her to get back together with him and trying to force her to let him see his son, the same son who he wished the worst for on the day of his birth. If that doesn't make your blood boil, then I don't, I don't know what will. Ava, even though she had no plans on getting back together with Randall, wanted their child to have a somewhat stable family unit. So Ava, trying to do what was right, made regular visits to Randall's house to try to normalize things as best she could, without getting Randall's hopes up, that is. Ava had made it clear time and time again that the reason for their meetings was only for Randall to see his son and nothing else. But Randall wasn't backing up. He constantly tried to get Ava back, which was why she was forced to take out an order of protective measures against him. Fast forward to November 1st, 2019. It was just another normal day for Ava, and she got herself and son dressed to go meet Randall at his house. At that time, Randall's parents were also present in the house, although they were on the upper level, and Ava and Randall were downstairs. Also, it's important to note that there was another child present in the house at the time. It was a five-year-old daughter who was Randall's child from a previous relationship. Keep this detail in mind because we'll get back to that in just a minute. As we discussed, Ava had gotten into the habit of letting Randall meet his son over the past couple of months. And on November 1st, Ava and her baby boy, who was now three years old, went to Randall's house to meet him and let him spend time with their son. But Randall had other very malicious intentions on that day. Shortly after Ava arrived, Randall continued to bother her saying that they should get back together. Now, Ava was understandably sick and tired of hearing these empty words from Randall. She knew that Randall only wanted to control her and their getting back together only meant that Randall had something to exercise control on. The constant persuasion from Randall angered Ava and unsurprisingly, a verbal argument ensued. It was very heated, and that is never a good sign. Now, it's unclear what led to the sudden escalation of the situation, as the only people who can tell what really happened are Ava and Randall. But things got really bad really fast. At some point during their argument, Randall pulled out a weapon, pointed it at Ava, who had her back to him and was completely clueless, and fired twice. While this attack on Ava was bad enough, we can't forget there were children in this room both Ava's son and Randall's daughter from the previous marriage. They both witnessed the crime firsthand. Considering these kids were the ages of three and five, it stands to reason that they'll both likely remember this moment for the rest of their lives. And the fact that this horrific act was carried out by their father, no less, is beyond words. As Ava was lying on the floor fighting for her life with two fatal shots to the head, luckily Randall's parents, who had heard the commotion and the deafening gunshots, immediately called the police. Neighbors also heard the shots and they also called the police. And with a stroke of luck, the police arrived within minutes at the scene and the parents wasted no time in throwing their son Randall under the bus. They knew that Randall was manipulative, abusive, and very violent, and he wasn't above committing such a heinous act to get the upper hand. The police immediately arrested Randall, who was trying to make a run for it, while emergency services rushed to Ava's side. Ava had a very weak pulse, and it was a race against time to get her to a hospital. She was immediately loaded into an ambulance and taken to the nearby hospital. But upon arrival, sadly, 19-year-old Ava had succumbed to her injuries and passed away. The whole situation was just too much. After Ava's tragic and sudden passing, the police had to execute another gut-wrenching task, and that was to inform Ava's family. Ava's parents were at home just five blocks away from where Ava was tragically attacked. And when they received the call from the police, Ava's mother, Alina, remembers the scene so vividly. She felt that time had stopped when she heard Ava's name from the police. She was immediately called to the scene, 
police cars and crime scene tapes surrounded the house, and it was a horrible situation. When a police officer inquired Alina about what Ava was wearing when she left the house, Alina was stunned into silence. She didn't want to jump to conclusions, so she answered and confirmed her daughter's attire. And it was at that moment that the police broke the worst news any mother could hear. The police told Alina that Ava had been attacked by her ex-partner, saying, quote, Ma'am, I wish I could tell you that it's not your daughter, but it is. Ava's parents had their entire world shattered in just one single night. Randall's parents were of great help because they helped the police in locating the weapon used on Ava, which was unsurprisingly illegally owned by Randall. It was found wedged in a brick wall behind the house, and it was immediately taken as evidence by the police. After his arrest, it would soon come to light that Randall, aside from operating a drug ring, had a very turbulent past and was also involved in crimes like simple and aggravated robbery, dating back several years before his arrest for the trafficking ring. It just goes to show that Randall was a danger to society from the very beginning, and he was a seasoned criminal. Remember, some of these crimes took place when he was just a teenager. This man was the living embodiment of evil through and through, but thankfully, his reign of terror was nearly over. Ava's funeral was held on November 3rd, 2019, which was a Sunday. Ava was laid to rest by her mourning parents, friends, and other people who admired her spirit and vision. Ava's passing was becoming national news, and people were stunned and saddened by her tragic passing. The president of Costa Rica, Carlos Alvarado, came forth with a statement on Ava's tragic demise, and he said, quote, I'm deeply saddened by the murder of Ava and all the other women who've been victims of violence. For some background, Costa Rica has been plagued with a lot of incidents that involve violence and subsequent murders of women, all rooted in a problem that affects their society as a whole, gender-based violence. After Ava's devastating passing, the custody of her son was granted to Ava's parents, who were treating him with all the love and attention that Ava would have wanted to shower him with in her own life. Tragically, this young man will have to live without his mother and father, and with the memory of his father aiming the weapon at his own unsuspecting mother, which is just so frightening and devastating for a child to witness. I cannot imagine the trials that this poor young man is going to go through. This type of trauma, there's no cure for. There's no amount of therapy that'll take away what this little boy witnessed that evening. In July of 2021, two years after Randall had attacked and taken Ava's life, the trial began. This was a trial that everyone was looking forward to because it was the only way by which justice would be served to Ava and the only way her family would finally be able to find peace. The prosecution presented evidence of abuse in Ava and Randall's relationship, along with witness testimonies and they stressed on the fact that Randall was violent towards Ava, and he had every intention of ending her life on the day of the crime. Randall's defense claimed that Randall acted in a fit of jealous rage on the day of the crime, when he saw that Ava received an intimate video call from another man, which is such a joke of a defense claim. It makes me wonder if this defense team even believed in the case from the beginning, or if they were just pulling the stuff out of thin air to ensure that this man went to prison. In the end, the jury deliberated and Randall was found guilty. He was given the maximum sentence, which was 35 years in prison. Unfortunately, that means this man will very likely be released one day and still have a good chunk of his life ahead of him. Meanwhile, Ava's family is left with a wound that will never heal. They couldn't have ever imagined that their daughter would be taken away from them so soon in such a vicious way. Ava was someone who fought for women's rights and gender-based aggression but she got trapped in the same web and sadly couldn't make it out alive. Even though she took all the protective measures, the Costa Rican government has stated that eradication of violence against women is a national and top priority, but these are just words until they're acted upon. Time will tell if they're actually willing to make a change. The tragedy that Ava went through on November 1st of 2019 could have been prevented. If only the perpetrator hadn't been released from prison so early on charges that were so severe. And if only Ava's pleas for help were taken seriously, she could still be here today, alive and well, trying to make the world a better place. It's easier said than done to leave an abusive relationship or to stop being on the receiving end of aggression. But there is always a way out. No one is worth getting humiliated or violated just because of gender. 
And if we constantly preach that the world has to be a better place, then we need to align our actions and visions with the results that we want to see, regardless of gender, race, or ethnicity. I've said this before and I'll keep saying it. That's why true crime stories is such a focus on female cases, because in countries like this, eight out of 10 domestic violence cases involve women as victims. That's not just a slight majority, that's 80%. We need to bring more awareness to these cases and we need to start taking action. And for the people like you and me with no political authority to change the laws, that can mean things as simple as keeping an extra close eye out for the women that you care about and the men for that matter. Don't blow off claims of people feeling targeted, preyed upon or made to feel uncomfortable. I know people who have personally been victimized by stalking, unwanted advances and worse. These are not claims that I personally take lightly. But these perpetrators were dealt with quickly and immediately, and they are no longer a problem now. This is the type of urgency that everyone needs to have with cases like this. This world needs to be a safer place for everyone, and no one should have to live with the constant fear of sexual or relational harassment. No one. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of True Crime Stories. I wanted to give a special thank you to a few channel members, including Neva Kelly and Eric Holloman. If you also want to become a channel member, you'll gain access to new videos sometimes days or weeks before they're uploaded to the public. And it's currently the best way you can help keep the channel afloat and help out. I'm so grateful to those of you who have decided to do that. If you want to join, you can click that big join button below the video or find the link in the description or the comments, if I can remember to put it in the comments. I'm also working on some new ideas to make becoming a channel member even better for you guys. And we may end up mailing guys a bit of True Crime Stories merchandise as a thank you. But let me know what else you guys would like to see from the membership program and I'll see what we can make happen. But as always, if you enjoyed this video, check out this other interesting case I covered. And don't forget to subscribe. It's totally free and keeps you up to date with all of my future videos. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.